Morning guys, I'm Dave Canterbury with Self Reliance Outfitters in the Pathfinder School. Today what I want to talk to you about is declination and navigation. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to talk a little bit about what declination is. And then we're going to talk about how to figure out your declination in case you don't trust the declination diagram on your map, which we'll talk about as well. I know that my board is fairly filthy behind me, so I don't need any comments about that. It just needs to be sprayed down with some WD-40, some alcohol, and cleaned off before the next class. But that hasn't been done, so I wiped it off as quick as I could for this demo. So first of all, let's talk about what the declination diagram on your map is supposed to do. When you look at your map, it will have a diagram on it that looks similar to this. And this will be grid north or map north. And this will be magnetic north. And this angular differential here, whatever it may be, is your magnetic declination. It could be easterly or it could be westerly. So this would be westerly declination and this would be easterly declination. It could go either way depending on where you're at in the northern hemisphere. Generally speaking, what you do is if you have a compass like the Sunto MC2, you adjust your declination plus or minus to match the map that you're using so that when you lay your compass on the map, everything matches up. Your, comp your map is set up in grid north. The grid lines on your map like this, this is grid north. Magnetic north may be over here somewhere. So even if your compass is laying here with a north needle pointing on one of these grid lines, or in a corner somewhere, you're trying to put this map so it's oriented to the ground. If magnetic north is actually over here, then your map is never gonna be correctly oriented and any route planning that you do on that map is going to be off by several degrees. So you adjust this grid to magnetic angle to match your compass to your map so that they're reading the same for route planning purposes and for navigation purposes. If you don't have a map, none of this even matters. You just keep your compass at zero and it is what it is. You're not trying to match it to something that's written down. So it doesn't matter if you're making your own map, it doesn't matter because you're only matching it to what you're doing currently on the spot. If you have a map that you're trying to match your compass to and navigate from, that's where this becomes important. Now, Every map or every good map that you have topo map wise is going to have a declination diagram on it that will tell you what that degrees of differential is easterly or westerly. The problem becomes in the fact that now we know that the magnetic pole has been shifting. I'll put a picture in this video from a website that talks about the shift of the magnetic pole, how far it's shifted over the years but it's shifting from over like Canada to being more towards Siberia, which means that maps that were written 25 years ago or printed 25 years ago could be completely wrong. And even something that was printed 10 years ago could be off by several degrees. So if we can figure out what that magnetic differential is ourselves on the ground, then we can match it better to the map so that our compass and our map match and we can orient the map to the terrain and we can navigate with the compass by planning routes on the map and everything matches up. The trick is how do we figure that out? And that's what this video is really all about. Okay, so real quick, let's talk about what we're gonna do on the board and then we're going to move to a map and then a live exercise doing the same thing. When you see the map, what you're gonna see is there is a known point that is what's left of my house that didn't burn down part of the roof. Okay. Up here, there's a known terrain feature that has a flat here. We call that Pine Island and there's a bunch of pine trees here. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take our map and we're going to lay a protractor parallel to our grid lines. And then we're going to use a string to give us a travel bearing from here to here. And that's going to be part A of our equation. Then we're going to take the compass and we're going to travel to that location. 
and we're going to shoot the azimuth, and that's going to give us the B part of our equation. And the difference between those two readings is going to be our magnetic declination, easterly or westerly. So let's look at the map first. Okay, so let's start with the map, all right? The known locations that we have are we have a house here, and we have a terrain feature here with a large grove of pines growing here on top of the hill. There's a bull barn back in here that's broke down, but I can't shoot from there to there comfortably. So I'm gonna have to walk out to the edge of the pines here on the front of this finger and shoot across here. And there should be a deer feeder sitting right in this area anyway, so that should be pretty accurate. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this protractor now, and we're going to make sure, A, that we put these crosshairs over the top where we plan on standing on the terrain, that zero's at the top, toward the top of our map on grid north, and that any lines that we have going across are fairly lined up with grid lines so that we're square on the map. And then we're going to cover up our target line, and we're going to be at about 276. So let's write down that 276 number. And then we're going to take our compass set at zero declination up to the top. Okay, so now we're up here on top, and you can see the deer feeder I was talking about is right there. The pines I was talking about are right there. And straight between those two autumn olives is the rooftop, what's left of the rooftop of my log home. So this is where we're going to shoot our asthma from. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to shoot this asthma. And we're going to get ourselves in a good position with our arms stretched out to reduce the size of that target as best we can so that we have less margin for error. And we're going to get a good sight picture on that rooftop. And then we're going to move our needle in the doghouse. And I'm going to have to put glasses on for this so I can see what I'm doing. And verify everything. Okay. Needle in the doghouse says about 264. Okay, so back here at the board with our numbers. Now, our number off the map was 276 degrees. And the number that we shot as a visual bearing was 264. Difference there, 12 degrees. All right. Remember that 264 is a smaller number going this direction than 276. So to match, we're going to have to add 12 degrees. Okay. With our cup is set to zero declination, and we're talking about a Sunto MC2 here. This is the compass that I recommend to all of our students. We talked about this in the Best Compass for You video. Your doghouse is right underneath your north, which is right at the zero mark on your compass. We need to change that because we have a 12 degree difference, all right? We need to add 12 degrees to this. So what we need to happen is when this bad boy is set to 12 degrees, we need to be north at the top. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a screwdriver. You can use the one that comes with your compass, but I carry one on my Swiss Army knife or my glasses and things like that. That works perfect with this little brass screw on the back side. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take this screw and we're going to move it so that that north arrow is 12 degrees added. All right, and that's gonna put us real close right there. Now, we can verify some things. Now we can take our map, and we can use our compass to take that same reading that we took with our protractor, and now, 
we should get pretty close to the same reading. Okay, now it's time to put some things together. So, the first thing we want to do is we want to orientate this map or orient this map north. So, we're going to put north at the top of our compass. We're going to line that compass up right in the bottom corner of the map. And we're going to turn the map until the needle's in the doghouse. Just like that. Now our map is matching the terrain and matching the compass, hopefully by the adjustments that we made. And now we're going to go back over here and we're going to look at this Look at that tick crawling across my... You want to know how I deal with ticks? Just like that. I don't pay them no mind. I see them, I get them rid of them, and I don't worry about them. No permethrin, no nothing. Okay. Now, here's our bearing that we shot up on the hill. And we're going to lay our compass in the direction that we shot that, along that line, just like this. And then we're going to rotate our buzzle ring until the needle's in the doghouse. And we're going to look at the reading at the top of our compass. Get those lined up right here. Okay. So we're at 270 and about two and a half to three tick marks, which means 275, 276, which matches the reading that we had with our protractor. So now we have matched our compass to our map, ignoring the declination diagram that came with the map. And in this case, the declination diagram says six degrees of declination westerly. And we know that we had 12 degrees of declination that we had to add. Why is that? Well, it's because the magnetic poles have been moving and they've been moving in this direction from over Canada, easterly towards Siberia, okay? Over the last few years. This map was printed in 2016. That's about the time scientists started discovering they need to make a lot of changes in navigational instruments and things because of the shifting poles. So that gives you verification on how you can do that without worrying. If you don't trust declination anymore, which obviously it was six degrees off on this because it says six degrees, it's actually 12 degrees. So those things are going to change over time, but that shows you the way to match them in the field as long as you have a protractor. And that's going to be the key element to this is you're going to need something that you can measure angles with on your map without using your compass to begin with, and you'll need two known points on the map. If you have those two equations taken care of, you can easily match your compass to the map without using the declination diagram. All right, guys, I'm Dave Canterbury with Self-Reliance Outfitters in the Pathfinder School, and I hope this video served to not confuse you, but to help you understand how you can accomplish certain goals, like matching your compass to your map. If you either don't have a declination diagram on the map, or you fear that it may be out of date. I appreciate your views, I appreciate your support. I thank you for everything you do for our school, for our family, and for our business. All of our sponsors, instructors, affiliates, and friends, I'll be back with another video as soon as I can. Thanks, guys.